Welcome to the video for Chapter 5, Lesson 4, Day 1. This is talking about average speed. So I do strongly recommend that you draw a model or at least organize your information when at all possible. Um, it just helps you see what you know, what you don't know, what you got to figure out in order to solve the problem. So in question number one, Julian walked from his house for two hours at a speed of four miles per hour to the library. He then returned home by bicycle at a speed of 12 miles per hour. So then we need to find his average speed for the whole journey in miles per hour. I know average speed, speed is your total distance divided by your total time. Whether you write it like that or you write it like this. Either way, it's the same thing. So in this situation, I know that he is walking from his house to the library, the library to his house, and that these are two separate things. And in this, we know we have distance, we have time, and we have speed. And I personally, this is just my preference, I like to organize the information this way because then I can see very clearly, like, this blue information is our distance, this yellow information is our time. And when you combine these together, you get your green, which is your speed. So looking at this, and I'm now going to take the information and break this up and organize it and get it placed properly so that way I can see what I'm missing and what else I need to figure out. So when Julian walks from his house for two hours, that is going to be time. And that's from his house to the library. So time is two hours and then at a speed of four miles per hour. So that four miles goes here. Our four miles per hour is our speed. Then he returned home by bicycle at a speed of 12 miles per hour. So again, this tells us that is a speed of 12 miles per hour. So it looks like we have a lot of missing information, especially from that library to home trip. But I do know that this distance here from home to library is going to be the same distance as library to home. So in order for me to utilize this formula of total distance divided by total time equals average speed, I need to figure out what my total distance is. And I don't know what my totals are yet. But if I calculate my total distance from home to library, then I'll also know my distance from library to home, and I can just double it. So now that I've organized that information, I'm going to move into my actual calculations. And I know, because I'm dealing with rates, my two units are um, miles and hours. And we know that Julian is traveling four miles in one hour and he's traveling for two hours. So he's traveling for twice as long, so that must mean, assuming he's traveling at a constant rate, that he's traveling twice as far. So that means he's gonna be traveling eight miles. And if you could remember that our formula for distance is distance equals speed times time, then that would have worked out pretty well there. But if you look here, that is exactly what we did here. Our speed of four miles per hour times our time, two hours, got us our new distance. But I can be absolutely certain from that rate model that I've got the correct calculation there. So if that's how far it is from home to library, I'm assuming that from library to home is going to be that same thing. And, ooh, interesting. So we now know our total distance is 16 miles. And we need to figure out how long it's going to take him to get there. And so if I know that he's traveling at 12 miles per hour and we're traveling for 8 miles, we need to know how many hours. So let me set up our rate line again. We know miles, we know hours, and we want to figure out how many hours. So 12 miles in one hour. He's traveling 8 miles, so we need to figure this out number out down below and well I know because he's only traveling eight miles my answer is gonna have to be smaller than one hour because if he can travel 12 miles in one hour we're going a shorter distance so this here is going to have to be less than one so 
I'm kind of confused on which division I need to do. And I have two options. I could do 12 divided by 8, or I could do 8 divided by 12. And if I think of these like fractions, 12 eighths, that's going to be greater than 1. But 8 twelfths is going to be less than 1. So I can't do this one because that, that wouldn't make sense. So instead, I'm going to do 8 divided by 12. Or how many times does 8 go into here? Or what? So 8 twelfths, I'm just going to simplify that. If I divide this by 4 and that by 4, I get 2 thirds. So that's 2 thirds of an hour. Okay, so 2 thirds of an hour. Hmm. Awesome. And so our total time is 2 and 2 thirds hours. So let's now calculate our average speed. There's a lot of steps in this problem, but they all seem like pretty reasonable steps if you've organized your information and thought what would be reasonable. So average speed is total distance, 16, divided by our total time, 2 and 2 thirds. Dividing by 2 and 2 thirds seems unfriendly to me, definitely. Definitely feels unfriendly. But I do know that if I'm dividing by fractions, I can turn it into an improper fraction. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. And dividing by fractions is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And I'm going to simplify before I multiply. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 16 divided by 8 is 2. And so now we're left with 2 times 3, which is 6. So Julian, or Julian traveled at 6 miles per hour. Let me check the answer to see. Choop, choop, choop. Six miles per hour. There we go. You got that one right. That was a lot of work. That was a lot of work. <sighs> Leah drove at two for two hours at a speed of 60 miles per hour and three hours at a speed of 50 miles per hour. What was her average speed in miles per hour for the whole journey? So we have two parts, A and B. We have distance, time, speed. I'm not going to color code this because that's going to take too long. So, so she drove for two hours, that's time, at 60 miles per hour. Then three hours at 50 miles per hour. So if you are driving at 60 miles per hour for two hours, well this is 60 miles in one hour, so two hours is going to be twice as long. 50 miles in one hour for three hours is going to be three times as long, or 150. So total distance is going to be 270. Total time is five hours. So average speed is total distance divided by total time, 270 divided by five. And I know this is like a 250 and a 20. 250 divided by 5 is, well, 25 divided by 5 is 5, and those are 10s, so that's 50. And 20 divided by 5 is 4, so 54. Average speed is 54 miles per hour. Great. Austin walked, well, let's double check, 54 miles per hour. Okay, good. Check that one off. Austin walked three kilometers from his house to Park A, then another four kilometers from Park A to Park B. The total time he took to walk was 48 minutes. Find his average speed in kilometers per hour. So this one seems gonna, like it's going to be a little bit easier than the others uh, because we know from his home to A, the distance, time, speed, whoop, whoop, and then A to B, zoop, zoop, and totals. So distance from home to A was three kilometers. Then A to B was four kilometers. So his total was seven kilometers. And they tell us that the total time was 84 minutes. Now it does ask for kilometers per hour. So I'm gonna need to convert those 84 minutes into hours. So I know that 84 minutes divided by 60 minutes, well, I could 
think of a rate line for this. I know that one hour is 60 minutes. So blank hours is going to be 84. So we need to do 84. How many 84s are going to get us to there? Got to divide. 84 divided by 60. Or 84 sixtieths. Let's do a wee bit of simplifying. I could divide by 2. And that would be 42 thirtieths. I could divide by 3 because I know those will be 14 tenths. Let me divide by 2 again. 7 fifths. Okay. So average speed is going to be our total distance, 7, divided by our total time, 7 fifths of an hour. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Let's simplify. So, five my, ooh, kilometers per hour. Let's check. Oops, too far. Average speed, five kilometers per hour. Brooke cycled at an average speed of 21 kilometers per hour from her house to the nearby park cycled back at an average speed of 14 kilometers per hour via the same route. She took 90 minutes to cycle back to our house. Eh, how long in minutes did it take? That's a lot of information. Brain can't hardly even process. Let's go and break this down piece by piece. We have distance, time, speed. And we are going from house to park, and then park to house, and then we have our totals. All right, so Brooke cycled at an average speed of 21 kilometers per hour. So that's speed from her house to the park. So here's 21 kilometers per hour. Then she cycled back at an average speed of 14 kilometers per hour. In the same route, it took her 90 minutes. So this is 90 minutes. And how long in minutes did she take to cycle from her house to the nearby park? So we are looking for this piece of information there. Now, in order for us to find out this time information, we need to know this distance information. And because it's a return trip from one place to the other, I know that I can use from park to home to calculate this space here, and that will give me the information I need to calculate my time from home to park. So distance, I don't know, I can't remember that formula right now, but I do know on my rate line, I have kilometers per hour, and we are traveling 14 kilometers in one hour. And 90 minutes though is 1.5 hours, because that's a 60 and a 30. And so we would need to multiply by 1.5, 14, times 1.5. Well, 14 times 1 is 14, and a half of 14 is 7. So that's 21 kilometers. So 21 kilometers is that distance from park to home. So home to park is also going to be 21 kilometers. Ooh. So 21 kilometers is the distance. She's traveling at 21 kilometers per hour. So that means our answer here is one hour. But the question doesn't ask how many hours, it asks how many minutes. So one hour equals 60 minutes. It took 60 minutes. Let's see. Ooh, there it is. And it looks like we got that one correct. As you can see, these problems are a little bit complicated as you get into them. But organizing your work and figuring out what would be reasonable can help keep straight all of these minor differences between the problems.